Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sam. In this video, I will take you through AWS Savings Plan, which provides you with a flexible payment model for you to save on your AWS usage. I will also walk you through the difference between the savings plan and the reserve instances and show you which option is best suited for any of the AWS services or your applications. If you haven't watched the reserved instance video, I will link it up in the description box. And as such, I expect everyone to subscribe to my channel, share and like for the YouTube algorithm to promote such videos to people who are in need of this fundamental basis in AWS Cloud Computing. See you in the video. In our previous video, we discussed reserved instances. If you haven't watched that video, I'll put up a link in the description box on top of right corner so that you can watch that video. Today we're going to discuss AWS savings plan. Now, when you talk of AWS savings plan, it means that AWS savings plan provides a flexible pricing model okay so that you can be able to secure enough savings on your aws usage okay so this one provides you with a flexible pricing model so we have about three types of this savings plan okay the first one is the compute savings plan the next one we have ec2 instance savings plan the third one we have the sage maker we will drill basically into the compute savings plan and the ec2 savings plan but then the sage maker sage maker is uh, a service that is used to train machine learning and all that so we wouldn't drill so much into the sage maker but then our focus will be on the compute savings plan and the ec2 savings plan now let's talk about the compute savings plan now the compute savings plan one offers up to 66 percent of on-demand instance okay you are able to save up to 66 percent of how much you would have paid using on-demand instances the next one is that it offers some flexibility so much flexibility with one the instance family so here you can be able to change from let's say general purpose to compute you can be able to change from compute to memory optimized you can be able to change from all the different types of instance family you have that flexibility within the compute savings plan okay you can be able to change flexibility with availability zone you can be able to change from let's say us east one to us east two in that order so you have the flexibility of changing availability zones the third one is operating system you have the flexibility of changing operating system from linux to windows or from windows to linux any of the operating systems you want you can be able to change you can be able to change the the tenancy meaning that whether dedicated or shared or host okay you have that flexibility to to change all of these now compute is some kind of uh improved convertible instance if you haven't watched what convertible reserved instance mean check up our previous video i'll link it up in the comment section sorry in the description box okay watch that video to know what convertible reserve instances are all of these are similar to what re convertible reserve instances have but then the major reason for using compute savings plan will be that this is majorly meant for compute services okay compute services 
Or, yeah, like the EC2 uh, AWS Fargate. Okay, Fargate deals with the con container container services. Okay, container. And then you have AWS Lambda. Basically, this is what the compute services actually meant for. Any of these services, you can use the compute savings plan. Okay. Now let's go on to the EC2 savings plan. The first one is that EC2 savings plans can offer you a discount of up to 72% off on-demand instance. So you would get 72 up to 72% off if you were using on-demand instance pricing. Okay. Now this one has flexibility, some sort of flexibility. Okay, so this flexibility is limited to specific instance family. So unlike the compute savings plan where you can change from general purpose to compute or to memory optimize or to storage optimize, with EC2 instance savings plan, you are limited to a specific instance family type. So if you put your workload on a general purpose it means that you are logged in to general purpose only you can't switch to any other instance family type okay you are limited to a specific one specific instance family type if it is general purpose you are logged into it if it is compute you are logged into it if it is uh, storage optimized you are logged into it okay the next flexibility is that you have flexibility to change from your instance size okay so let's say you are logged into let's say compute so let's say c6 so you can be able to change the instance size from let's say c6.x large to c6. let's say 2x large okay so from for the instance size so far as the family uh, the instance family is the same you can be able to change the instance size without any problem without any issue okay the next one is the operating system so you have the flexibility to change the operating system from windows to linux or from linux to windows and then the tenancy you can also be able to change from dedicated to chat to okay this is some kind of improved standard reserved instance if you don't know what standard reserved instance check my previous video i will link i'll put the link in the subscription box or you can find it on top of the right corner over there okay so for the ec2 instance savings type all of these uh, flexibility can happen within specific instance family in a region okay whatever flexibility you can be able to change will be within a specific instance family now let's discuss the difference between savings plan and reserved instance okay so we have savings plan and then reserve instance and the savings plan provide flexible rising then the whereas the reserved instance provides specific now as we will see in the demo very shortly the savings plan provides flexible pricing meaning that you determine how much you'd want to pay for an hourly rate okay it gives you that flexibility to determine oh i can be able to pay ten dollars i can be able to pay five dollars you you have that flexibility while the reserved instance is specific aws determines that price per per hour for you so you don't have that flexibility over there now the second difference is that this one it applies the discount it applies discount on the largest discount you have whereas this one applies discount on matching usage okay now let me explain this now 
let's assume you have so many uh savings plan in your aws account okay with different services with fargate with uh lambda and all that on ec2 and other so the one that provides you with the highest discount is what the savings plan will apply first okay so let's say if ec2 you have an ec2 instance which has about let's say 32 percent discount you have fargate service which has let's say uh 10 percent discount and let's say you have a lambda function that has 25 percent discount okay when the savings plan when it's applying the discount it will first of all apply discount on the one which has the highest discount so the ec2 will first of all get the 32 percent okay and then it will move up to the lambda which has the 25 percent discount before the 10 percent discount so that is how it applies the discounts on the savings plan but for the reserve instance it applies based on your matching usage how much you use depending on the model or the prices that you have chosen that is what it will apply it doesn't have it doesn't check up for whether this instant uh, this uh, discount is higher or the other it just applies on your matching usage okay now the third one here will be savings plan savings plan is limited to a few limited to few services especially when it has to do with compute compute services which includes ec2 ec2 lambda fargate and then the sage maker okay whereas reserved instances have a little much a little more services that it applies to so some of the services include ec2 rds redshift open search dynamo db and then elastic cash okay so these are some of the services that uh, reserved instance applies to now the question is how then do i determine which of these plans are best for me okay which of these plans are best for me so if you have the compute services compute service which includes the ec2 lambda fargate and then the sage maker as at the time of this recording these are the services that are available on the savings plan okay if these you use these services okay it will be best to go for the savings plan and then if you use any other services apart from these it will be best to go for the it will be best to go for the reserve instances okay now you can have a combination of both of them in fact aws suggests that if you are using reserved instance and then your term expires you move on to the savings plan okay so especially if you are on ec2 it will be best to use migrate your ec2 from the reserved instance to the savings plan so ec2 on the savings plan and other services which are not any of these on the reserved instance okay that way you can be able to still reduce your cost on these services with that being said let's move on to our demo our ec2 console for the demo so you log into your ec2 console then you go to click on savings plan click on savings plan then it tells you you read all this but then you click on purchase savings plan okay so it gives you a brief description of what savings plans are you can read through but then you can go to you click on recommendations if you don't if you if you don't have any idea how much you would commit to the hourly hour you can use aws recommendation now this will 
based on your historical uh, billings it will suggest an amount for you okay so that you can be able to use that as a yardstick to input for your committed amount okay so you can see that mine is fairly new and besides it says that your average on demand spend is below 10 cents an hour so they can't recommend for you but what you can do if you don't really need aws recommendation you can you click on purchase savings plan okay so the first one says compute savings plan this applies to ec2 instance usage fargate and aws lambda okay so let's click on savings a uh, compute savings plan you click on that term you either choose one year or three year so you choose one year term now the hourly commitment what this means is that how much are you willing to pay for an hour is is the is dependent on you this is where the flexibility comes in you don't have this option when you go to the reserved instances okay so the flexibility comes in handy here with the hourly commitment amount you are deciding how much you'd want to pay for an hour so you can decide to put any amount there so the least you can put is 0 0.001 cent so that's what the, then i choose the payment option i'm going for all upfront so the start date is optional if, if you don't choose a start date now the start date will tell when do you want the savings to apply okay you can choose a later date the savings will not apply until you have paid that amount and then it reaches when it reaches that date it will start applying the savings rate but now it's optional so we won't go for that so what this is telling us 8.76 dollars is telling us is that for the whole year we are going to pay this amount okay for the whole year we are going to pay this amount you click on add to cut okay confirm add to cut so that is that let's add another savings plan this time we choose the ec2 instant savings plan we select our term we choose one year now remember when we were dealing with the ec2 savings plan i told you that it is limited to an instance family within a particular region okay so here is mandatory for you to choose a region so i'm going to choose eu west which is london then i choose my instance family okay so let's say c compute you can choose m for uh, general purpose or you can choose r for memory optimized any of them so my hourly rate i'll still go with 0 0.001 option payment you can choose the upfront upfront payment means that you are paying all at a go partial means you are paying part and then the no upfront means that you are not committing initially but then it will spread over payment over the month so that you pay so we are going for upfront payment this one too we have 8.76 dollars you click on add to cut confirm anyway okay then immediately you click on submit order it sends request to ec2 and then it is charged this amount all right so if you have gotten any value out of this please subscribe to my channel like it and share for others to know so that it, uh, youtube algorithm will send all those who are in need of such tutorials to watch thank you and bye for now